one way of doing it. And that's another. Either way, both of these couples have just exchanged 250 types of viruses and bacteria, 9 milligrams of water and 0.2 milligrams of unspecified organic matter. It's a disgusting thought that we could swap all those bugs in just one kiss. But luckily, kissing is relatively harmless. <coughs> in reality, bugs can enter the human body in different ways. They attack us from the air. Bugs can travel in tiny water droplets from coughs and sneezes. And they can enter the body through deep cuts and open wounds. Bugs can also be transmitted easily during unprotected sex. In fact, the human body is under constant attack from many unseen body invaders called microbes, particularly bacteria and viruses. The viruses uh, mainly a disease, disease. I think a virus is something you can catch. Even something that makes you ill, something like that. I suppose I know what a virus is, but I wouldn't know how to describe it. Bacteria can be passed through the air. So airborne diseases. I think viruses in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. No, viruses more than bacteria. I don't, yeah, I no. don't, I don't know. <laughs> if you don't keep yourself clean and that, you get bacteria and things, and things can get swollen and pussy yeah. and nastiness. A virus is something in the air. It's not bacteria. No, no, they all no. Are, but... the virus is. I'm sure it is. A bacteria is. You can catch. Oh, I don't know. There are a number of specific differences between bacteria and viruses. The first of these is size. Bacteria are much larger than viruses. You can see them under an ordinary microscope. Viruses can only be seen under an extremely powerful electron microscope. Bacteria live in air, water, soil, rotting organic material, as well as living things, whereas viruses can only become active once inside living cells. There is also a big difference in the way bacteria and viruses attack the body, causing disease. Bacteria can reproduce by dividing and multiplying. Under suitable conditions, a bacterium may divide into two every half hour, producing over a million bacteria in ten hours. Bacteria attack body tissue, surrounding and killing healthy cells in the process. This is a healthy body cell. It is about to come under attack from bacteria. If left untreated, bacteria quickly multiply and will overcome healthy body cells. Viruses multiply by inserting their genetic material into living cells. Once inside, they reproduce in safety, hidden from the body's defenses. The viruses then spill out and invade other cells. Here's our healthy body cell again. This time, it's about to be attacked by a much smaller virus. The minute virus is able to penetrate the healthy cell wall and in doing so hide from the body's immune system. Once inside the cell, the virus quickly multiplies. The body has a number of ways to fight against the bugs and protect itself. And the first line of defense is common sense. There is no way you would do this. But you might forget to wash your hands after you've been to the loo. And if food looked like this, you'd never eat it. But you might eat food past its sell-by date. So when it comes to avoiding microbes, use common sense. Our second line of defense is the body's natural armor, the skin. In addition to being a tough barrier, the skin's pores ooze a mild antiseptic which attacks viruses and bacteria. However, the invaders are eager to get into the body and take advantage of all natural open doors. The biggest is the mouth, and microbes love it. It is wet, warm, and full of places to hide. 
Although it is protected by saliva, which has antiseptic qualities, the lining or mucous membrane in the mouth is soft and relatively easy for bacteria and viruses to penetrate. As for the invaders which venture down our throats, they are in for a grisly end as they splosh into the stomach, which is a bag of strong acid. However, occasionally the body encounters the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the bug world. These are strong resistant strains of microbes which get through all our defences and make us ill. The mouth may be an open gateway for viruses and bacteria, but that doesn't mean that we should stop kissing. We have a powerful final line of defence to deal with invaders which do get inside our body. The blood contains white cells which move around the body looking for invaders. These white cells make up our immune system. The white cells are like a police force, each with a different job to do. Macrophages, helper T cells, killer T cells, and B cells work together as a team to fight invading microbes and toxins. Unchallenged, some microbes cause disease. White cells are on the lookout for microbes and toxins. The white cells called macrophages are on patrol to detect invaders. Usually macrophages kill microbes. If the invaders are too difficult to handle, it hangs on for help. White helper T cells sniff out invaders and alert the rest of the team. Killer T cells and B cells. Killer T cells destroy the invader and B cells make tags called antibodies. It records and labels each type of microbe and then creates tags or antibodies which lock on to the invader like a jigsaw. These tags are distributed in the body to trap unsuspecting bugs. When more bugs arrive, some are caught and identified. Killer T cells are alerted. They destroy both invader and tag. If the same bug revisits, its records are already on file. The B cell makes more tags to distribute and have a better chance of fighting a second invasion. However, some viruses are more cunning. They are masters of disguise. Others can hide inside normal cells, making it impossible to produce the right antibody tags. But we can help our immune system with medicines, vaccinations and common sense. Stay fit, eat well, and keep the bugs away. Yeah! So is it safe to kiss? Or isn't it? You can catch meningitis from kissing, I think. Cold sores. No, actually. It's like quite a long word, isn't it? Strafa, coca, yeah, something, something like that. You can get that through kissing. You could catch colds and viruses in bad ways. the fever. I don't think so. No, not. Well, nothing serious, anyway. Well, I haven't caught a anything cold, yet. Maybe. I mean, you can catch um, any sort of HIV from cuts in your mouth. There's a possibility of catching these, I think. Well, to the best of our knowledge, no one has ever caught HIV from kissing. This is because, despite its reputation, it's a very fragile virus which survives better in blood and semen. But one virus which actually relishes the thought of a good snog is the cold sore virus. The cold sore virus has infected around 85% of adults. When it's active, the cold sore virus produces small blisters on the lips and around the mouth, which are extremely contagious. When the cold sore disappears, the virus retreats and hides inside the nerve cells supplying the lips. It can stay dormant in these nerves for months or even years before it re-emerges to cause another cold sore. This is a cold sore virus hiding in a box in a nerve ending. Outside the box, the body's immune system is constantly alert, looking for invaders. If new invaders keep the body's immune system busy, then the cold sore virus will raise its ugly head. 
Fortunately, if healthy, the body's immune system will quickly attack the cold sore virus, forcing it back into hiding. If they've got weeping cold sores, you don't usually bother. I uh, definitely wouldn't miss anyone with a cold sore. <laughs> no. If I had a cold sore, I'd still kiss someone, it wouldn't worry me. I probably wouldn't kiss if they had cold sores because it doesn't look very attractive if you catch them. If I was really drunk, I might ignore a cold sore. This man is infected with the cold sore virus, and he is about to develop a cold sore. He has now infected this woman with the cold sore virus. This baby is now infected with the cold sore virus and will remain infected for the rest of his life. Another virus which jumps at the chance of a Christmas kiss is glandular fever. There are more incidents of this viral infection, appropriately named the kissing disease, after Christmas and New Year than at any other time. Fortunately, not all these invaders cause infection. In fact, millions of them live in or on the body, causing no ill effects at all. So keep healthy and keep kissing. Keep kissing. Keep kissing. Keep kissing. Keep kissing. Keep kissing. Viruses and bacteria love sex. They take advantage of unprotected sex to pass from person to person. Like the mouth, our sex organs have mucous membranes which are wet and warm. Great places for bacteria and viruses to multiply. And some of these can lead to sexually transmitted diseases. It's HIV. What's the difference between love and herpes? I don't know. Herpes lasts forever. <laughs> I heard of herpes, but I don't know really what, it's mean, what it means. Gonorrhea is like um, gangrene. You can catch um, HIV. I hate, I hate like AIDS through sex. Probably the most common infection we see is non-specific urethritis, or NSU, which is uh, caused by a bacteria. We also see gonorrhea, which is less common, but is also caused by a bacteria. And we see quite a lot of viral infections, such as um, herpes or wart virus. And we also deal with uh, viral infections, such as HIV and hepatitis. I don't think you would know until something yeah. got sore and you had to go and see the doctor. You don't just know from looking at someone like whether they've herpes. got HIV or, or a sexual thing. disease or not. Right. You have to get checked out. You'll probably feel nausea and you'll probably feel sick. And or you'll probably, get a rash or whatever yeah, you it might is. Irritate, whatever you it might is. get really irritatious or, you know, okay. you'll just get really nervous or whatever. You'll probably know from little signs. Like, uh, you'd see um, little ch changes happening to them. If like, you, like uh, I don't know really, like probably hair will start falling out or something like that. In women, the symptoms we would look for would be um, an unusual discharge from the vagina and any itching in that area. Uh, we would also be concerned about pain in the lower part of the abdomen. Symptoms of an infection in a man would include pain on passing the water and discharge from the water passage of the penis. Uh, we would also be concerned about uh, any rashes affecting the genital area um, and also pain in the testicles. I had um, unprotected sex about 10 days ago now and uh, I noticed things weren't as they should be so I thought it best to come down somewhat reluctantly uh, to have it checked out. I always use a condom, it's just so annoying, just that once, it just takes one go and I had to put myself through all this. I just wish I had made the effort at the time. It's not that hard. Hello, hi. Hello, come and have a seat, I'm Dr. Dave. Right, okay, so what I need to do is ask you a few questions about the problems that you've had. So, would, would you like to tell me a little bit about uh, what you've actually noticed is wrong? Yeah, sure. Um, over the last couple of days, I've noticed that um, it's slightly sore when I pee. Mm -hmm. um, and also it's a little redder than it should be. Right. Have you noticed any unusual discharge? Um, yes, I have actually, um, a little bit, and obviously it's not normal, so I thought I'd come along and uh, 
have it checked out. Mm -hmm. So if I could ask you to pop behind the curtains and uh, to slip your trousers off for me. OK, sure. Right. Yes. You may find this a little uncomfortable. Right, okay. I'm just going to take a, a swab from the inside. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. What sort of things will you be looking for? Well, we'll be looking at this slide under the microscope uh, to right. look for signs of infection. Okay. And also, we can actually see some of the bacteria under the microscope. Right, okay. And then following that, we'll send these tests off to the laboratory to see if we can grow any infection over the next week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bacteria are visible under the microscope, so it's possible to see if a person has a bacterial infection by looking at samples of discharge on a slide. To make the bacteria show up better, they are stained with a special dye. From the shape of the bacteria, it's possible to identify the infection. These are the bacteria which cause syphilis. And these cause gonorrhea. Viral infections such as HIV are much harder to identify. They can't be seen under the microscope, and special tests have to be done to detect them. Only bacterial infections can be treated with antibiotics. Bacteria have been grown on this plate from an infected person. The clear zones show where the antibiotic tablets have destroyed the bacteria. So the results have shown that you do have signs of a bacterial infection called NSU, or non-specific urethritis. Oh right, and what does that mean? Well, NSU is a term that we use to cover a group of bacterial infections that cause uh, the irritation in the water passage that you've noticed. Mm -hmm. Now the most common cause of NSU is a bacteria called chlamydia, but there are other um, bacteria that cause NSU as well. We can't test for all of those, but fortunately the treatment is the same for all of them. What uh, form does the treatment take? Well, you'll need to take antibiotics for a week. These are untreated bacteria. These are the same bacteria after being destroyed by antibiotics. Most bacteria can be treated by antibiotics, but antibiotics have no effect on viruses. It's also very important that your girlfriend comes in and gets treated at the same time. Another important thing to remember is that in the future, if you want to protect yourself against infections, that uh, using a condom um, can help you to do that. Yes. I'd probably have unprotected sex after three months if I knew the person's sexual history as well, and I could be sure they hadn't got any dodgy disease. <laughs> if I was going to have a sex with a girl, uh, she'll ask me if I was going to wear a condom. If you didn't know the person's sexual background, then you would use a condom as well, definitely, to stop yourself from getting HIV. I wouldn't mind asking a bloke to use a condom. I know I should do, but it's a hassle sometimes. I think it spoils the moment. I use a condom, but I'd do that anyway. So maybe not use a condom, it would be alcohol-related, I think. Well, this is just the experience I've had. I wouldn't mind at all if a girl was carrying her own condoms. I think it's good. Condoms don't only protect us from unwanted pregnancies. They also act as barriers against bacteria and viruses. Even though viruses are extremely small, they are still too big to pass through the condom. It acts as a second skin.